to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen here with Astrid Kaufman. Today is Monday, December the 30th, 2019. It's 4 p.m. in New York and wherever you are in the world, thank you for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And uh, Louis is off to, uh, he's still off in uh, Austria land skiing down the slopes, so um, we don't have the, <laughs> the pleasure of his company today. But Astrid is back after a couple week uh, absence, and good to have you back. And, and from what you were telling me before the uh, show, it sounds like your Christmas has been a wonderful one. Yes, it's been very nice, Walt. Thank you very much. No dramas, no, you know, just lovely spending time with family and uh, having a great time. See, that's the best when there's no drama at all. That's like, <laughs> oh, everybody just relax. Everybody just feels good. Oh, Everyone's oh. just chilled out. Yeah. 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 Uh, there, there was one little bit of drama um, with our Christmas, and it was a great opportunity to practice keeping one's mouth shut and minding one's own business. <laughs> and uh, I would say the rest of us all passed with flying colors. So it, it went very, very well. Fantastic. You <laughs> yeah. did great pivoting then. <laughs> great pivoting, right? <laughs> That's really good. Sometimes I, it's really hard to keep your mouth shut, isn't it? It is. <laughs> well, it, it's, a good, it's a good habit. It really is a good habit. Um, it's a very you good just habit. Make, you just make that vibration bigger if you put words to it, don't you? I Would think you that's agree? true. Yeah, and and by doing what the group did, which was basically to just let the person burn their energy out, um, by the time they were done, they hadn't burned themselves out completely, but they hadn't gotten a whole lot of response from anybody. You know, so usually somebody like that, they're they're looking to get the energy back, right? Yeah, right. and if you and and if you give them fuel for their fire, well, then you know if if you don't give them that fuel, then it does burn out. It burns so itself out. That's exactly. that's really good. That's yeah. a really good way of uh, of letting things just kind of settle down into a different into a different energy. Absolutely, and it, it was cool because well, first of all, it was, it was one of those topics that I think most people know to stay away from. It was a it was somebody who was uh, going on about politics. And people, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, pe- people know for the most part to, you know, especially these days, because there, there's plenty of controversy going on these days. People just know, you know, that's really not what we want to talk about during the holidays. So <laughs> it, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't difficult, but it was, it was also admirable. Everybody just kind of fell into line with, nope, we're just not going to even feed anything into that. And it worked. It worked out very nicely. Um, so actually, well, actually that kind of ties into what we were talking about for a topic today, right? We were yeah. talking about uh, just going over some of the basics about energy and vibration and how that plays a huh, an inseparable role with uh, being a conscious creator. Uh, you really can't be a creator without understanding how that works because without that, it doesn't make any sense. None of it really just kind of adds up. But with that knowledge, everything starts to make sense. At least that's the way I look at it. Is that what you see also? Yeah, and, and uh, I thought it would be really interesting to discuss uh, energy and vibration and is there a difference between the two and, you know, I, I can sort of add my my two bits to how I explain energy, working with energy all the time, and then how does that fit in with vibration, you know, vibrational frequency, vibrational alignment, vibrational harmony, vibrational match, all these things that uh, that are in basically ask and it is given, mm-hmm. uh, which which is uh, so in the glossary at the back. It's very interesting to to see how um, how Abraham describes uh, these different these dr- different terms. One of my favorites is uh, how to describe the universe. Going a little bit off piste, um, a, a somewhat quantifiable spatial experience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe we can talk about that later as well. Sure. Uh, but initially, initially, you know, what is energy? I mean, what is energy, and how does that? How does that? Um, how do you describe that in terms of something very practical? Um, and the way that I describe it is we are all energy. So everything that we see has a uh, has an energetic component to it. So the microphone, the table, the chair we sit in, you know, it all has molecules. There are all molecules that are, are vibrating. It's just that they, these molecules in the table or in the chair are, are vibrating at a much, much less frequent rate than we are, say. 
So, <laughs> well, yes. Uh, so if you look at that in terms of energy, that's, you know, energy uh, denses down or, um, or uh, sort of becomes less dense. Mm -hmm. So we are on a, a level, we have many different densities of energy within us. And when we talk about, say, source energy, it is a very pure, high vibrating energy. And we have a connection to that source energy, as Abraham says. So we have a connection to that high vibrating energy. But then we can also come down and get stuck in the mud with this lower, uh, less high, vi you know, sort of, uh, slower vibrating energy, which is what I call the stuck in the mud kind of energy. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and I think our thoughts also reflect that. So our thoughts reflect the high vibrating energy or the slower vibrating energy. So the faster vibrating energy, the slower vibrating energy. You know, what do you think? Does oh, that, think does so that kind of describe? Yeah. In fact, I was, I was interested in something you said. You, you, you talked briefly there about how we have different levels of energy. And I think many of us have thought about it in terms of, well, there's there's the pure source energy or the non-physical energy, and then there's the energy that we have in the physical. But your statement actually suggested that there are multiple levels of energy in the physical, as well as the non-physical energy. And, and I hadn't thought about it that way. Talk about that for a moment. Yeah, yeah. So there are, there are, different, um, there are different states of energy density within us, without us and within us. So, uh, so we have a lot that we can work with. Mm. Uh, and obviously, obviously, because we are made the way we are made, the physical is the, is the dent, densest vibration. So, so um, we have components that are physical, we have components that are liquid, we have components that are gas, you know, we are made up of all these things. And the gas is 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 the the sort of least dense um that's one level to look at it from but we've got all these different energy levels that we can that we can work with and um and then you know to get into a vibrational uh state uh you know what's what frequency are we going to are we going to go to mm -hmm. uh so we can manipulate that we can manipulate that through our thoughts, through what we do energetically, through breathing as well. Uh, and it's very interesting. It's just very interesting to play with energy. When you become aware of it, it's very interesting to play with it. No, that's true. Um, by the way, if you can do anything to move a mic closer or something because your, your volume is pretty low, that would be very okay. helpful. But that, okay. that's, that's a really great point because we don't think about it in terms of it being different levels, different vibrationary levels. And... Of course, the one that we have the greatest amount of influence over are the ones regarding our own thoughts. So, mm. I mean, all of those uh, items that you listed, that you itemized, are going to be influenced by our thoughts. But they also do have their own vibrations. I mean, um, individual cells in the body, for instance, all have individual vibrations. And those vibrations are driven by the needs of that particular cell. They also serve the body as a whole, but they serve themselves. That's another interesting kind of a fascinating piece of it. Almost makes me think we need to have like a medical expert in to talk about that in more detail or perhaps a biological expert. But mm. the fact is that when you have that many levels of vibration going on at the same time and our minds influencing all of that, well, it, it raises interesting questions, doesn't it? I mean, we talk a lot about resistance. We talk about you know, stuff isn't coming into our lives that we want to have come in or things aren't happening quickly enough or whatever. We describe that as resistance. But perhaps another way to describe the same thing is our minds are basically trying to orchestrate a whole orchestra of different vibrational levels that are changing at their own rates, that are basically doing what they have to do in their own ways, somewhat in concert like an orchestra would do. But nevertheless, they are all their own voices. It's amazing that our minds can actually do all that. When you really think about it. I know. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, it's, it's mind boggling. That's actually. right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, for me, for me, the cells, the cells are absolutely incredible structures. Mm -hmm. Um, they, they are, they are my most favorite part of the body because they are complete entities and we have trillions of them 
that uh, that that make up our beings. Right. And uh, within that one cell, you've got everything. You've got uh, you've got that energetic component. You've got it's it's taking in uh, fuel to to energize, and then it's getting rid of waste. Uh, so it's in constant motion, and you think of all these trillions of cells within the body that are doing that, and you've got a human being, or you've got an animal, or you've got, you know, it's uh, it's uh, really, really mind-boggling. And then if you go beyond that cell, what is what is propelling that cell, you know, and that's the energy. That energy that is that is creating this force to to keep that cell alive and and working. So uh, and it's basically a very simple a very simple energy you know component uh, or a formula. You give the cell good fuel, good water, good oxygen, and uh, it can work properly. And then it creates energy for you so that you're alive and uh, you're doing what you need to do. Uh, mm-hmm. And then you need to get rid of the waste. That's it's the simple thing, so that the whole body can maintain homeostasis. That's balance, the body balance. It's a good so thing most of this happens subconsciously. Otherwise, we'd be spending all of our time focused on this. <laughs> well, that's that's the amazing thing is that all these things uh, take place subconsciously and automatically. Mm-hmm. You know, you mm-hmm. breathe automatically. Everything is your heart is pumping automatically. Um, and, and that's, I think, where it's really important to, to be aware that, uh, that these things happen automatically. And we become very, in a way, we're very spoiled. Yes. <laughs> because these things happen very automatically that then we, we've unlearned the, the art of, um, of co-create, of, of, co-creating but also of um of uh of manifesting what we want so when when we actually do focus on the breathing or what is happening or and we we actually we actually focus on our thoughts then then we become really really powerful mm. Incredibly powerful. In fact, to the point where we become where, really, yeah, we, to the point where we become um, powerful to our benefit and at times to our detriment. Um, I mean, when you one way to look at what you just described that that beautiful symmetrical dance between um, the components that make up our bodies and ourselves. On the one hand, that's a wonderful opportunity to experience appreciation. Like, thank God all that stuff just, just goes on and it just, it's, it's providing me with a, a, a way to live in this physical life and to do the physical things and so forth. Um, or on the other hand, it can also provide us with the opportunity to kind of like you say, take for granted and take it for granted to the point where we start to get down on stuff. We start to, you know, oh, get so frustrated that things aren't working out the way we wanted to or whatever. And in that process, and this is the most amazing part, in that process, the body and the cells of the body individually and collectively respond to that behavior as well, to that thought process as well. Um, in fact, mm, uh, my sister-in-law, true. who uh, is due to get her PhD in January, that we're looking forward to that. It's going to be really exciting. But uh, she, in her postgraduate studies, looked at a lot of different um, research that was done regarding the role between what the brain and thought processes do and how the various bodily functions operate. And one of the things that she told me about, she was a co-host on the show about five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. One of the things she told me on one of the shows was that when the mind, when the brain specifically, because obviously they, they can't study the mind, but they can study the brain. That's a physical thing they can tap into. So when the brain has a particular thought of a, what we'll generally call a positive nature, they can trace from the point of that thought all the way through the various systems of the body to some other point on the body, a healing process, a process of nutrition and all the stuff that you were describing, everything from energy creation to waste production and, and removal and all that kind of stuff. They can trace that entire process. By the same token, if 
the same subject has a thought that we would describe as a negative or um, uh, unpleasant or counterproductive or however you want to describe it, or just a thought of lack or I don't like or whatever it might be. When that thought is, occurs, they can trace that again all the way through the body to the same points in the cells. And, if the, and she was at that point in time looking at the nervous system. So she, so she wanted to see what neurons would do. With the first kind of, of connection, the, at the local levels, neurons were, uh, were creating uh, new neural connections like crazy. In the wow. second set of circumstances, it was actually killing off neural connections. Yeah. And and each of these patterns would happen within a 90-second span. So from the point that you had your thought to the point where the body was either creating and healing or destroying cells was a 90-second span. And then we wonder, well, why does it take forever for things to happen? It doesn't. It actually is happening pretty quickly. It's just that it doesn't happen all instantaneously. Thank goodness. It gives us a little bit mm. of a buffer time. But it doesn't kill all of our cells simultaneously you know, within the same 90 second span or else we'd be dead pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And thank God that cells regenerate themselves as well. That's because right. Otherwise we, <laughs> we wouldn't stand a chance. <laughs> gosh. Oh my gosh. Yes. But she told me that and I just, That's I was just like blown away. I mean, just how quick the whole thing can happen. And, and we're not talking like degrees, we're talking about heal the cell or kill the cell. Heal the substance or kill the substance within 90 seconds. That I mean, that's really, that's abrupt. <laughs> I can't think of yeah. a better word. That's really abrupt. So if, uh, if that can happen, then is it possible as well that, say, um, someone with uh, cancer could also do that, could Absolutely. also focus and you know, have that thought, have that very clear focused thought. And I wonder if that, you know, if that could be uh, researched and, uh, and actually shown and, and, and actually confirmed that the, the mind could, I'm sure the mind could do that as well. If it were a clear cut uh, thought. That, I'm reminded that would... of, of all the different teachers um, going back many decades um, in more recent times, I would think of somebody like an Anthony Robbins. Um, mm. who taught us that we were using, you know, 3% or 6% or some small percent of our overall brain power, our overall mind power. Yeah. And I asked myself back then, well, what's the other 96% for? Well, now I know. The other 96% is, is for having the ability to focus on doing this, this thing that we're talking about right now. But the fact that we haven't learned to marshal it yet just shows we are relatively infantile <laughs> i don't know another way to say it we're we're basically in the early baby stages of learning how to control all this stuff we're, we're in the early stages of trying to maintain a consistent energetic vibration going back to our original topic mm. um mm -hmm. so i mean i i think about what a researcher would want to do if they were if, if there were researchers and there are a few who uh, want to pursue this kind of thing dr, dr. Yeah, Dr. Joe Dispenza comes to mind as somebody who has spent a lot of time working on this. Uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton is another one. There are a few others who have been doing substantial work in this area. But uh, overall, most of the research area obviously is not uh, going in this direction. They're focused more on diseases and all that kind of thing. But there are a few who are doing it. And, and the big problem they have facing them is how do you structure a any kind of a study or a survey or uh, you know a double-blind test or whatever, within the context of people who barely have any self-control, because that's what we're saying. Somebody who only has you know use of four, five, six percent of their brain power really has only a minimal level of self-control that they've developed. And I, I think what's happening is we are all developing that more and more, uh, year by year, lifetime by lifetime, so that it is increasing, but. Nevertheless, we have ways to go. So how do you how would you study that, and how would you turn that into meaningful data? That that's a considerable problem. That's not an easy problem for a researcher to solve. Yes, because how much of it is qualitative and how much of it is quantitative? Yes. Um, and <laughs> uh, indeed, it's. Um, I guess the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> you know, it is. The results. <laughs> it is. I, I suppose um, you could you could argue it that way. Um, 
So I mean, Abraham certainly yeah, tells and, us and that we that we have the ability to do this. That literally, if if uh, we're sick with cancer or anything else, we can heal that in a week. They they made that a very clear statement. How many people actually do that? That's another question. Why? Why aren't they sure. as successful? Because of the lack of a consistency. Um, I'm, I'm convinced it's the lack of consistency because I experience it in my life every day and I know everybody else does too. I mean, how many times do yes, we sit I mean, down the... and say, I'm going to start focusing on, I'm going to do some new affirmations and I do it for one day and then I'm done. And then I go back to the old thought pattern for the next five weeks. You know, it's like, well, that's fairly inconsistent. <laughs> or perhaps yeah, consistent yeah, the that... other way, you know. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. It's it's the consistency of um, of the the positive versus the, the negative thought. It's the consistency of I know what it is I want and I know what it is I don't want mm-hmm. versus I know what it. Louis would be very proud of me for saying, that. <laughs> you know, know what you want, know what you don't want. <laughs> Louis, are you listening? Um, but it's uh, it's very true. It's about it's it's not about just sort of doing it for one day. It's about the consistency and the building up of it. And um, and I think I think part of you know what um, what Abraham keeps harping on about is is slowing the mind down so that then you have that that point of allowing. And then it's nearly like you've got this wheel going in one direction. You've got it going, you've got it going, you've got it going over years and years and years and years. So first of all, you've got to stop the momentum of that wheel. And the way you stop the momentum of that wheel is to slow the mind down, you know, slow it down, slow it down until it comes to a stop. And then, of course, what takes quite a lot of effort, not only the slowing down, but getting it going in another direction, So that all takes a lot of effort. Once you get it going, I'm just using an analogy here, but once you get that wheel going, it's a lot easier to maintain that. But the, the real hard work is to stop the wheel, first of all, and then get the momentum going in the other way. So once you've got that momentum going the other way, it, it becomes easier. It's like you've got that momentum going. It's just Mm -hmm. tweaking and just, you know, uh, you're flying then. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And I'm not sure it's actually even a matter of effort. We often describe it as effort, but I don't think it's effort. I think think it's more persistence or consistency, perhaps, might be the better way to to describe it. I think consistency is the word. I think it's it's about it's about being away and doing being aware and doing it consistently, Uh, being aware, consistency. Yeah, consistency. And and catching yourself, too. I, I spend a lot of time catching myself. Oh, I'm on that other track. I really don't want to be on once again. <laughs> Here I am stuck there again. Oh, no, got to get out of it again. Okay, redirect again. What is it I'm redirecting to? Oh, yes. Now I remember what I'm redirecting to. I'm focused there, and I stay there, and five seconds later, I'm back on that old thought. Oh, I'm back on the old thought again. Oh, no, get back to the new thought. Here we go. Pivot over there. I mean, it's just a persistency. You're constantly you know, staying after and saying, okay, I really want to be focusing over there. And yes, my attention keeps drawn over here, but I really intend to be focused over there. And yes, it gets drawn over here, but yes, I'm really focusing. It's just this back and forth as you basically reprogram, as you basically retrain yourself to think on the thought topic or the thought process that you prefer. And the good news, this is to me the great news really, is that the more that we do that, the better we get at it. It's like any other skill. Um, Cindy Chavez, who does the uh, yeah, Wednesday and shows, and that's... She, one of the things mm-hmm. she likes to say is that you can anybody can, for instance, learn to draw. And there are a lot of people, including myself, who would say, yeah, right, I can't draw to save my life. Forget it, it's not going to happen. But she points out that if you get a sketchbook and if you try to draw one day for 10 minutes and then the next day for another 10 minutes and then the next day for another 10 minutes and you do this every day for 365 days, by the end of the year, you're going to know how to draw. And that's because you just keep, you start with this really, really bad drawing ability that hardly even exists as, a, as an ability at all. And you just keep refining it every single day with every single attempt to draw. So yeah, your first 300 drawings may be terrible, but 301 isn't too bad. And 302 is a little bit better. And 305 is really a whole lot better. And 320 is, oh, what's happening here? That's actually looking like something. I know. It's practice makes perfect. And right. uh, it's doing it over and over. Um, and if you focus on 
it's like a skill. It's like any skill, you know, retraining the mind is like any other skill. It's a, it's, it's yeah, like a muscle that you have to learn to use and mm-hmm. then keep using it because if you don't lose, if you don't use it, you lose it, you know, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Because it's so easy to get back into the old ways. Oh, well, I'm just, I'm just not going to, you know, I'm just, I'm just too tired to be aware, to be focused, to, to, to not think that thought that I, I'm so, it's so easy to think because mm-hmm. everyone else is thinking it or because I've seen it on the television again. And it's so easy to, to, just, to, just to not fight it or, or just, you know, but, but to actually, to actually stay with it and be aware that, mm-hmm. no, I'm not going to go there. I'm going, I'm going to pivot or I'm going to do whatever it takes to, to get to that positive, uh, you know, downstream thought. Um, and, and yeah, that takes practice. That takes practice. It does take practice. But and it's it not, it's not, too. and it's, it's for every single person. That's, that's, mm-hmm. that's just something that we all, each one of us has to do all the time, be aware. And, um, and sometimes, yeah, sometimes it's good to wallow, but don't wallow for too long, you know, get into Not, not unless you like the result. Yeah. If you like the result, then wallow well, there all you exactly. want to. Exactly. Right? True, true, <laughs> true. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, um, and and of course it's coming back to to the feeling the emotional guidance system you know to be very aware of what is it that i'm feeling you know mm. because it's it's okay when i can control my environment but then something will happen and you're not in control anymore at least you are but you think you're not right but you are so something happens and it creates a feeling that is not the optimum I am joyful feeling. <laughs> this is because this is what happens when you're human. We have these, you know, this is what happens. So the first thing is to acknowledge how you're feeling, I think. I mean, this is from my perspective, you know, mm-hmm. having sure. having had this happen to me just recently. And, you know, I'm in a really good space and all of a sudden something happens and my my emotional state changes from up here to something a lot lower mm-hmm. and you know before it would be ugh, you know this is how i feel and and you know kind of looking outside for answers i blame this person or this is they shouldn't have done that and this and that and of course we're now talking about a very different kind of awareness and um, actually, no, this is how I'm feeling. So I acknowledge that I am feeling this way. But then it's about um, it's about going to that place, if one can, of where you are in vibrational alignment with your inner being and then seeing a completely different perspective. And then everything just kind of settles down and... I can't tell you. It's like a magical, it's like, a, it's like magic, you know, everything just changes again. And within a very short period of time, you, you go back to a state of calm or serenity or uh, contentment or no, it's just what happened and it's no one's fault. And, you know, yep. just a very different perspective. It's well, it's like, and I was, said, I was quite pleased with myself. Well, good. You should be. <laughs> Um, but that's training that's training it's Mm -hmm. training it's training yourself where am i on the emotional guidance system scale you know where am i what's happening here why am i feeling this way uh i mean not to overthink it too much either because it can you know that's not it's just about accepting being aware and then and then working with it and 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 getting that relief to the next step the next step and doing whatever's necessary I hold fingers a lot. So, you know, in Jinchen Yitsu, we hold fingers a lot because that gets you back into harmony um, once once we know whether it's worry, fear, anger, grief, or efforting. As you're pointing to your thumb, your forefinger, your your middle finger, ring finger, and pinky finger. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And the fact is that we get better at it. We get a lot better at it as time goes on because of what we said, that you know, we're practicing, we're getting stronger. Um, I'm continuing to look forward to uh, the coming year. We're at the December 30th, two days away from New Year's. And I am more convinced than ever 
that the coming year, 2020, is literally going to be a 2020 year, a year of clarity for huge, huge numbers of people. Um, and I think it's going to be especially true for those of us who are consciously creating, who are consciously working on maintaining and developing discipline about where we're putting our attention and what kind of thoughts we're giving our attention to and doing more of the, the thinking and feeling about stuff that we like and prefer and less about focusing on the stuff we don't prefer and don't like, especially for that kind of person, 2020 is going to be an amazing year. But even for mm -hmm. people who don't really even know this stuff, uh, people who believe in other, you know, in other understandings, philosophies, religions, and so forth, um, who aren't aware of what we're talking about here, even for them, I'd say there's going to be a tremendous amount of clarity this year. And I think we can kind of attribute that to what's often called global energy or worldwide energy. Because energy is individual, but it's also universal. And that universal energy, that global energy, is increasing its vibration. has been for quite some time. Um, Louis told us very recently, recently being within the last year or two, um, mm -hmm. that's, that's relatively recently. <laughs> he pointed out that Abraham um, used to say that it took 17 seconds um, after you thought a thought to get another thought like it. Now it's down to 14 seconds evidence that the global energy uh, vibrational level has increased over the time that Abraham's been sharing their messages. Well, Abraham's been doing that for, what, 30, 40 years. It's a relatively short period of time as these things go. And in that mm -hmm. time, we've just reduced the the uh, latency period, let's call it that, from 17 seconds to 14 seconds. That's vibrational energy increasing. That's pretty cool. Yes. And yes. I think 2020 is going to be a, another year like that. Um, and I think it's going to be a uh, you're like that in a big way. I think we're going to see lots of resolution in 2020. Lots, because there's been lots of crises going on of various kinds in various people's lives, various cultures around the world over the last few years. I think 2020 is going to be a resolution of a lot of them. It doesn't mean there won't be no new crises. There will be. There will be new things to resolve and so forth. But I, I just think by the time we're done with 2020, we're all going to be remarking on, wow, that, that was really quite a year. That was a, that was a year of clarity. That would be really nice. That would be really nice. And the interesting thing is that the energy site that's uh, that's um, number twenty on the body is here. Pointing at your forehead. Yes, pointing at my forehead. So on the forehead, we've got energy site number twenty, and that is about clearing clearing the head the sort of universal wisdom and uh, it's uh, it's really really interesting that you said that so 2020 and 2020 vision of course right right um now, really i didn't know that about point number 20 being the forehead that that just kind of adds to yes. it as far as i'm concerned yes so so really um clearing and uh becoming more of that you know universal connecting that universal wisdom as i said yeah mm. Yeah. Lovely. Very interesting. Very mm. interesting. So, all right, well then let's, let's do a little looking into the future for 2020. I mean, I've kind of laid out a rather rose glassed <laughs> view of it, perhaps a uh, very positive view of it. Um, but, uh, let's look into our own lives. What do you see, uh, things happening in 2020 that are exciting to you or that, uh, are resolutions for you? I I'm seeing some for myself and for my wife and, and people close to me. Um, for instance, Louise and I, um, we've been married 20 plus years now. We have never owned a home, not once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm like 99% sure we're going to buy a home in 2020. That, which is something really yeah. to look forward to, you know? Absolutely. Especially Absolutely. given what we've had to go through financially to get here because the financial journey has not been the most fun one, shall we say? <laughs> <laughs> it's been pretty miserable at times, but through, um, first of all, what we do here on the show, talking about what, what we talk about, but also uh, just through my own personal work and, and my wife's personal work on ourselves and our physical work that we do for a living, um, things have turned around. Things have turned around yeah, substantially great. to the point where yes. we can actually finally do it. I mean, it, a year ago, if you had asked me a year ago if I was going to be able to buy a home, if we were going to be able to buy a home... I would have said, well, it's a nice dream. I don't really know how it could happen, but it's a nice dream. That's how far away we were. Now it's a certainty, or as close to a certainty as I can have without actually already having the house. 
<laughs> that's mean, fantastic. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, yes. it's, it's pretty exciting. So that's one thing that uh, I'm kind of looking forward to. Can you think of anything going on that, you, that you're looking forward to for 2020? Well, I think um, I think there'll be there'll be lots of um, you know, I've for me uh, the last few years have been building and building and building uh, and and also self development. So. Mm. So I think I think there there will be a culmination of all these things coming together, and um, and and things like a jigsaw puzzle, just just things falling into place. Yes. Uh, without without a, a a great degree of effort, um, I mean there will be there will be work, some work that needs to be done, but uh, it'll be it'll be. Uh, I think there will be some co-creating going on that will be synchronistic and, you know, things will just, things will just flow. I think there'll be a lot more flow, uh, a lot more flow. Um, and I, what you say about uh, the collective as well, uh, you know, there are a lot of people who've been doing this kind of work for a very long time. And I think, I think there'll be, be more and more of a tipping point where, um, where, where things, start to change i mean i'm not a i'm not a clairvoyant or anything but uh but you know it can it can only go that way um considering more more of the awareness of of abraham's teachings uh you know the the myriad uh videos on youtube that people watch um it's 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 just it's just um uh, the tipping point has you know there'll be another tipping point and and that's very exciting it's very exciting not only with abraham but but in in all in all different modalities and mm -hmm. uh, and and us as a as an evolution uh sort of our individual evolution and also as a as a collective as a species um there are many challenges ahead but uh but um you know that's that's also something that abraham says is that it's nearly like we we can ride either that wave or we can ride that wave mm -hmm. and there's nothing that we need to fix and there's nothing that we need to right be concerned about which is a very challenging thing to hear sometimes mm -hmm. when you look at what you see um, and um, you look at uh, what people like, um, well, like Greta and uh, David Attenborough and all these, mm -hmm. you know, all these programs mm -hmm. are saying. But at the same time, uh, yeah, it's very interesting. <laughs> it is it's interesting. It's a very interesting time to be alive. It is. So, um, so I, I think, uh, I think that, um, I think that it's, it's very exciting. Yeah. It's interesting that you mentioned the idea of a world that needs fixing, which it doesn't. I, we both mm. agree on that. The world mm. does not need fixing. But the impetus behind that thought, that the world is broken, that you know people are broken, that it all needs fixing and so forth, is really the same impetus as I don't like something. And mm. if you understand mm. it that way, then you begin to realize what, Abraham's really saying and what other teachers are really saying when they say the world doesn't need fixing. What they're really saying is it's perfectly acceptable for you to say, I don't like something. I like this other thing instead. And that is all you have to do. I mean, if you want to quote, fix the world, unquote, all you have to do is choose what you prefer. Now, the world was never actually in need of repair, so it's, it's not like you know there's going to be an emergency team that comes in and puts Band-Aids on everything. I mean, there might yeah. be one. I mean, people may actually do something like that, but <laughs> but in general, that's yeah. not what's going to happen. Um, but what is going to happen is we're going to get more of what we like when we focus more attention on what we like and prefer. So in that sense, we really can fix the world. When we're, fix, when we're saying fix the world, I think it's important to understand what we're really saying is to attract more of what we want. It's a different kind of thing from going in and I will make you behave in a certain way so that I can feel better. That's an entirely different um, oh, yeah. thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. But when we go in it, into stuff with an idea of I'm just going to spend more time focused on what it is that I like, then we don't even have to worry about it being fixed. 
because it's not a question of fixing anymore. And what we originally thought of as a thing to be fixed actually just kind of evolves into something else entirely. It just naturally turns into something. So, yes, we used to think about it as something that, that needed to be fixed, but now it's just something that we didn't really prefer and we stopped paying attention to it and it went away. And going away, in a sense, is being fixed, but in, in a much bigger, broader sense, it's simply a demonstration of how the law of attraction works. That yeah. simply when we focus our attention on what we like and take our attention off what we don't like, what we don't like goes away, which is exactly what we wanted in the first place anyway. That's why we I said know. we had to fix Isn't it. Isn't that so great? Yeah. Isn't that great? I mean, yeah. that's just like magic. That's that's so profound, isn't it? It is. It, it's it's so profound. Thing. Yes. And it's it so just much goes away. <laughs> I mean, a problem doesn't exist unless you look at it. Mm. If you If you... You know, <laughs> that's why it's so great to pivot away from something. No kidding. Like, no. Okay, uh, you know, I, I know that some problems are bigger than others, but at the same time, if you don't give it any energy, then it's it it, it just doesn't ex it doesn't exist. And it's if you like do give it energy, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. It's like the conversation yeah. we had at Christmas. Well, it was a one-sided conversation where one of the members of our group was going on and on about politics and mm. nobody else was feeding into it. Yeah. Nobody else fed into it. And so it went away. Now, did it go away for that person? No, I'm sure that person's still heavily focused on it. But for the rest of us, we just kind of, it just dissipated for us. It just, it, it, it stopped being of any kind of concern. And all of us gained tremendously from that. And ultimately, the person who was spewing all the stuff gained from it, too. He just doesn't know it yet because he burned himself yeah. out, you know, throwing all that stuff out there. It didn't get him anywhere. You could tell afterward he was frustrated because nobody was jump jumping onto his bandwagon, you know. <laughs> but, you know, he he'd basically blown himself yeah. out. And so now he had an experience of what happens when he focuses on what he doesn't like and, and gets a result he doesn't like. That's a great experience to have. I mean, you can't get it wrong, right? He's getting it right. It, it's his yes, way. It's yes. the way that he's progressing to where he's going to have greater understanding of how his life works and how his energy works. So everybody wins. How cool is that? Everybody wins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So um, I'm looking. I'm looking at these um, at these terms: vibrational alignment, vibrational frequency, vibrational harmony, vibrational match. And they're all pretty similar, but they're they're slightly different. Mm -hmm. um, although vibrational harmony and vibrational match are both described as harmony of perspective. So, um, and vibrational frequency is a state of vibration, and that's that's always very interesting to me when because it, it Abraham describes it so nicely when uh, they describe, you know. A radio station or a radio with lots of radio stations and if you tune in to the right frequency then of course hey it all matches up right uh but when you're not quite tuning in then you just hear a lot of garbled messages and <laughs> you know um and that that to me it's like get the vibrational frequency right and you're a match so vibrational frequency is is related to being a vibrational match or vibrational mm -hmm. harmony sure um, and actually, hey, look, vibrational alignment is all is also harmony of perspective. So it's the same as vibrational harmony and vibrational match. Mm -hmm. Sure. So you know. That's, so those two uh, go along. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah. So source energy is the eternally expanding vibrational stream of well-being from which all that is flows. So energy is all about flow. Okay. When you flow, your energy circulates, your energy flows. It's a very different feeling from when your energy is stagnated and things just don't work properly when your energy is stagnated. So when there is flow, energy flow, that is really, that is really cool. That is really important. That is important, yes, because what you're, the opposite of that would be congestion or yes. uh, restriction. And traffic when jam. That, traffic jam, that's right. <laughs> when the traffic is jammed, when the congestion is congested, 
nothing flows, we all know that that is not a good feeling place at all. That is but, not. No. no. But when you, quote, go with the flow and, and the flow just keeps going, that's a great place to be in. It feels great. It feels wonderful. Yeah. Because everything Green just lights. goes so easy. Cool. Yeah. Green lights. Yes, right. One after another. <laughs> One after the other. Doesn't matter. It's whatever time of day that, you know, and, and you can you can relate that back to the feeling, how it feels, you know. Yay, I'm off. I'm, you know, I'm getting somewhere. Um, but when you're stuck in traffic, it is just the worst thing in the world. Well, really that, that's another thing. I mean, we're talking about how, um, especially for the coming year, but also looking at the development of humankind over the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years, mm. we're looking forward to more clarity, more, um, I would say, prosperity, happier lives, more success, and so forth. And I think that's all happening. But by the same token, things happen in life that we don't like. They just yeah. happen. And that includes yep. being stuck in traffic. That includes yep. having a congested nasal passages. That includes all that stuff. That does happen, <laughs> right? So what you do is you put on an Abraham tape. That's what you do. Well, that's sure. Yeah. That's one, that's one very good reaction to Tape. It. Do people still do tapes? No, you, you just stream it. <laughs> stream it pretty much, right? Yeah. But the fact is that when we focus, um, uh, no matter what way we focus, we are still in a reinforcing mode. So if we're in traffic and we're frustrated by the fact that we're in traffic, we're reinforcing with frustration. Sure, sure. And when we're in traffic and we focus on, boy, it's going to be so great when that traffic clears, we are focused on the traffic clearing. And I have, I, I'm getting more and more experience with what happens when I focus consciously in that exact kind of situation, talking about traffic, yes. and seeing how quickly traffic clears. Yes, absolutely. It clears unbelievably quickly. I mean, it, it, yeah. it, you can be in the middle of a major traffic jam, massive traffic jam, traffic moving at five miles an hour, and stick with in your own mind for just a few moments on this is where I want the traffic to go. I want it to be flowing. I want it to be clear. I want all the cars to move out of the way. And invariably, within like at the most 30 minutes, usually five, 10 minutes, it clears and gets out of the way. Yeah, yeah. It's just amazing. And, then you, and there's and there's no there's no accident. There's no nothing. It's nope. like, why was there that congestion in the first place? Me, no I idea. Did it. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. doing it. I was or focusing were, on how much I didn't like that congestion. And, we were all uh, we were all we were all, all <laughs> focusing on how much we didn't like that congestion. So we all co-created that congestion, and then bang, you think differently, and you get out of that. You get out of that stream. You go downstream. In fact, get out of it. It's I have actually gotten to the point now where I can see, particularly in a highly congested traffic situation like that, I can see other drivers. You can, you know, you can you can spot mm. who's around you and so forth, and you can see, in some cases anyway, what's on their faces or what their their, <laughs> their body motions are showing you, and you can tell which ones sometimes from the way they're driving, which ones are the frustrated ones, which ones are the ones in the calm, cool place, and so forth. I've been in numerous situations like that where I got myself into a, a, a really clean, clear space and I could tell that there were drivers around me who weren't and the hole opened up for me and closed for them. I mean, it's just freaking amazing. <laughs> that is super. I mean, when you get that degree of instant response, you just, mm. first of all, I, I, I pat myself on the back for having noticed it because that kind of thing happens all the time. I just yeah. wasn't noticing yeah. it. And second of all, I just become astounded by it. Just astounded. It really can be that quick. Regularly. Yeah. Not just yes. occasionally. Regularly. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. No, that is that is that is superb. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I, I think we should just do a rampage of appreciation <laughs> just for that. <laughs> I think I just did, actually. <laughs> I think you did. I think you did. Yeah. Yeah. That is such a, that's such a great, and, so, and, you know, traffic, traffic is a great time to actually practice. Uh, oh, well, where else are you going to go? Practice <laughs> manifesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> parking spaces and traffic. Oh, parking yeah. spaces. Yes. Parking they were, they spaces were my are first, also pretty cool. They were my first successes. So I have a, a special soft spot in my heart. I think most people start with parking places because they're easy. 
Yeah, yeah, they become Hopefully pretty I, easy. Yeah. <laughs> and always make sure that you say thank you. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Appreciate. Yes. Appreciation Appreciate. is huge. It's huge. Yeah. It's, yeah. What, what other thing happens a lot now is the more that I've practiced the stuff, including in adverse situations like traffic jams, the more I am appreciating, first of all, how many different kinds of resistances there are in me. And second of all, how many different opportunities there are for pivoting? Yes. They really go together, mm. right? I mean, mm. all those instances where I have resistance built up are exactly the same thing as instances where I have an opportunity to pivot. And probably the biggest part is recognizing that that opportunity exists. Occasion for occasion for occasion, every single time. Just noticing it's always going on. Yes. Absolutely. It goes on in every conversation. It goes on in, in every physical experience. It goes on everywhere, all the time, continuously. It's like, wow. <laughs> it's a ton of opportunity going on there. Pivoting is, uh, is very powerful. So what are we going to do with it? Well, are we going to pivot or are we going to default? Most of us default. Most of us just go back to whatever our default pattern is, and then we just continue to do and get the same results we've gotten all along. But some of us are saying, you know what? I'm going to treat everything that happens as an opportunity to pivot. And that's fun. Okay, let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. I'm, I'm quite interested in that because um, I think it's a good reminder. I mean, you know, it's easy... It becomes easier to pivot with simple things, but I think if we're if we're looking at something a lot more significant, something that means a lot more to us, um, yeah, like what what situ how would you? I mean, I suppose it's the same thing whether it's something small, whether it's a button, or whether it's a castle. You can you can still yeah. pivot. <laughs> yeah, well, and there yeah. are a whole lot more small situations than there are large situations on a given day. I mean, for for every large situation, there are probably 500,000 small ones. So there's, sure. th there's a preponderance of the small situations. But that, I think, is great because the small ones are the easier ones to pivot on. The ones we have the most trouble with are the ones that are the, that are the big ones that we have these big amounts of resistance attached to. So we have this really strong tendency to focus a lot more on the things we don't like and forget completely how all this stuff works. But the small stuff, you don't. After you practice this stuff for a while, the small stuff, you don't really sweat too much. So it becomes pretty easy with the small stuff to say, oh, another opportunity to pivot, oh, another opportunity to pivot, and just Which to, adds to make up that pivot. as well. It does So those, those opportunities add up throughout yes. the day. So they are, they are actually helping us release resistance uh, over and over and over and over and over again. So that by the time that we get, hopefully by the time that we get to something that's a bit more significant, we'll have been practicing quite a bit so yeah i can see that happening that's really really good one of the that's most really common words i use nowadays is okay and what that means for me is i've been presented with another opportunity to, to choose whether or not i want to pivot and my way my okay saying okay is my way of saying okay so here's something else going on how do i understand what's going on here so i know what i prefer and what i don't prefer and so i can make my pivot Okay, so what's this thing per this person is saying? Okay, here's what's going on in this situation. Okay, this is this new thing that's going on over here. Each of these okays is an opportunity to say, what do I prefer? What don't I prefer? Now that I know what I prefer, can I bring my attention over there? And 99% of the time, I can. So I do. So is that how you pivot? That so you pivot by doing that? I pivot by moment refocusing. by moment. Yeah. Every yeah. moment. I mean, okay. I was I was doing a lot of pivoting today. Um, I've, I've, people who are regular listeners know that I've been working on a computer programming project for the last month and a half or so, two months actually. And today I had a lot of pivoting opportunities. <laughs> 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 it was just, I, I had this one thing I'm trying to resolve and I'm trying to get myself into the mind space that it's easy, that's going to just fall into place and so forth. And mm -hmm. inevitably I would... I'd have one new thing to try. Okay, I'll try that. Didn't quite work. Okay, that didn't work doing it this way. Didn't work doing it this way. Okay, sit back, relax. Let's just you know try to get into that good space again. Do it again. Get a wrong result. Lots of opportunities to see it differently. And interesting thing happened was I kept saying, well, okay, that's simply another way not to to make an electric light bulb. Okay, that's 
not that's a, simply another way to not make a working computer program. Okay, there's another one, and there's another one, and there's another one. Oh boy, I'm running into a lot of them today. <laughs> 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 okay, so let's let's go back to let's go back to that uh, the fundamentals. What is a pivot? Because we've been talking a lot about a pivot, but but to those people who might have just joined us, that's a good point. Um, yeah. Can we just go back to the fundamentals and, and describe what a pivot is? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think you could describe it along the lines of what I was just saying. Any situation mm-hmm. you come upon, you decide whether you like it or don't like it. If you don't like it, then you change your perspective about it to something that you like more, that you prefer more. It doesn't even have to be perfect. It just has to be better. So if you can change your perspective to something that's a little bit better feeling, you've just pivoted. And there are a lot of different ways you can pivot, but what it amounts to literally is just changing the way you're looking at the thing. Change the way you're understanding it. Change the way that you're thinking about it. And when you do that, you're you're basically shifting your your vibration. Yeah, because for me, uh, I've said this before in a previous uh, episode, uh, for me, it's, it's literally... When I pivot, I literally am in a cockpit, and for me, it's a very visual thing. Oh, okay. So I will, I will go. You know, the black cloud is here. Whatever's happened, the black cloud's here, and I, I just pivot by changing the course of the plane to that paradise island with the sunshine. So, you know, it's a very <laughs> visual pivot, literally. Um, so. You know, you use the word okay. So everyone, everyone, whatever works for everyone mm-hmm. or for each one of us, you know, we need to find that little kind of thing that describes what a pivot moment is. Uh, but that can be, as I say, my little cockpit for me, you're okay for you. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and that's why I kind of wanted to go back to, to what fundamentally it meant. Right. It's and, different and for everyone. Yeah, you, you create your own. You decide how you're going to pivot. You decide yeah. what your method is. And yeah, if exactly. you don't know what your method is, try a few. You know, you'll, you'll find yeah. it pretty quickly. It's not like you're going to lack offer opportunities. <laughs> they keep popping up. <laughs> yes. And when in doubt, just, just go to Ask and It Is Given because uh, I'm holding up the book here because it's like, it's such a wonderful book. Mm. And. Uh, it's got all these processes, and pivoting is is one of the processes in the back it of is. the book. It is. It is indeed. In fact, the yeah. uh, th- there are, there are twenty two steps on the emotional guidance scale and twenty two processes. I, I I've often wondered yes, if that really number was was intentional yes. on their part. I don't know. Of course. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the fact is that all, also those twenty two processes have um, they, they've been labeled in certain ways to to say this particular process is appropriate for you if your vibration is in this particular range. So yes. if you're feeling really rotten, don't do the ones toward the beginning of the list. Do one of the ones toward the end of the list. Whereas if you're feeling really great, use one of the ones toward the beginning of the list because they're That's actually quite graded. Important. Yeah, yeah, they're graded for, for where you are right now, what, for what you're feeling. And once you, it, it takes a little while to grasp that because they don't explain it really clearly in the book. But once you grasp that that's what they're doing, it becomes a whole lot easier to select the process. And some of the processes mm. actually cover a wide range of, of emotions anyway. So you can kind of yeah. go with those. I mean, meditation, kind of hard to go wrong with meditation. It covers almost all of them. You know, so uh, another one that the uh, same kind of thing is, um, wouldn't it be nice if that one covers a wide range? Um, but yes. if, you, if you pick one that, that fits your range and just, you don't have to stick with it every single day. Stick with it for every day where you're in that range. It works. It pays off. It's once again. It's like learning how to draw. It's learning how to do this stuff just by processing over and over and over again. Taking yeah. advantage of the fact that we are creatures of habit. That we, I mean, we're, we're basically learning how to take advantage of the fact that we have the ability to create a program and play the program. So and change just, it. And change it. So we're rewriting <laughs> programs all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a cool thing. It is. It's, really it's incredibly well. We're cool, you know. Well, we Us are. humans, we're cool. We are. We're really we're fabulous. Cool. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of which, uh, about something that's cool, I want to make sure that people who are not yet subscribers of the podcast know it is cool to be a subscriber to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. And if you're not yet one, just go to LOAToday.net's website. 
Um, right at the top of the home page, you'll see a link on how to become a subscriber. Very easy. In most cases, it's one click. Some cases, it's two or three, but it, it doesn't take very much, and it's gui- it guides you right through it. And then once you're a subscriber, you get all the shows coming five days a week to you, right to your device as we publish them. Um, feel free also to check us out on YouTube. Um, just go to YouTube and do a search for LOA Today Podcast Videos. It will pop right up. Subscribe and click the little bell to be notified. And you can follow us there, and you can actually see what we look like because we live stream uh, recording uh, with video as we are recording these podcasts each time. And so feel free to join us each of those ways. And also check out the Pivot Pals group on Facebook. That's a group where we all basically support each other with little vignettes of things we're trying to attract into our lives. So if you wanted to have a supportive place to uh, put your stuff out there and get some uh, feedback and some group energy to help move it along, by all means, join the group. We'd love to have you. Um, and Astrid, as we go into 2020, it's our last show together for 2019. So what's, <laughs> what's the uh, final message on the end of 2019 and the beginning of 2020 from Astrid Kaufman's perspective? Oh, my goodness. Well, um, just keep doing more of what you're doing, you know, everyone. <laughs> just, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's great. It's great. And uh, great work. We've all done great work, and we'll just continue to, uh, to do that. And uh, um, life is meant to be fun. Remember that. Very good. So let's put let's put more fun into 2020. I love it. That's Excellent. my motto. Excellent. Excellent. I couldn't have ended it better. So thank you very much, Astrid. <laughs> I'll be talking to you again and Louis back uh, next week in 2020, January 2020. So looking forward to that. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you to our podcast listeners as well. We will see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye. See everyone. you next time.